how do you not take things personally? Because people will block you. People will say nasty things. How do you protect your space? So I do think an element of that is just your personhood. It's just the unique genes that you have that make up who you are. And in, at the start of the book, I basically argue that, well, I cite research that says that about 50% of our happiness stems from our gene genes. Mm -hmm. But of course, the good news, that means there's still 50% up for grabs. So what are some things that we can do that can, wherever we are on the happiness set score, we can improve on. And so for me, from an environmental perspective, I think having grown up through some of the horrors of my childhood, the Lebanese Civil War and so on, I'm always able to contextualize anything that I'm going through, that I'm feeling anguish about in light of what could have been given what I went through in the Lebanese Civil War. So I'll give you a, a, a minor example that highlights this. So as I was about to embark on, you know, the, the media tour to, to promote my book, you know, you wake up, you're, you're anxious, oh, I have to travel here, I have to travel there, I've got a million shows to do. And so you can easily allow that stress to take over. And then right away, I kind of thought to myself, are you really complaining and whining to yourself? that you're going to be speaking to all kinds of interesting people who actually have given you their forum to speak and you're because you're going to promote a book that hopefully is going to do well, snap out of it. And so I think by always contextualizing whatever is upsetting you in light of the bigger picture, it can hopefully ground you back to reality. So I would assume that's a muscle that you have to work because it's not going to be reflexive initially. So some people tend to be stuck on this lower like if you see like these arcs, kind of like a graph where it's sneaking up and down, if you're at this high point, it's very easy to have gratitude and appreciate all, everything that's going well for you. But if you're stuck in this rut, then all you see is the negative. So it's really hard to kind of have that upward spiral moment or to train your, your brain to do it. Do you have steps for that? Or is it just awareness and interjecting? Well, certainly awareness. But I also think if you if you view whatever thing that you're trying to achieve at its end point, then oftentimes it could be, become daunting. But if you you simply atomize it to let me win today. So what do I mean by that? Let's take, for example, the weight loss thing, right? Mm -hmm. If I had started, which I have done in the past and say, you know, I'm, you know, I probably could afford to lose 50, 60, 70 pounds. I'm never going to get there. Well, I'm, I've already lost. I'm, I'm at the bottom of the curve, as you said. But if I say every single day, there are three possibilities that could happen as relating to my weight. My weight can stay the same. It can go down that day or it can go up that day. How about I just make sure that on every single day, however little amount, it's always that I weigh less today, even if, I, even if the scale can't pick it up, right? Well, guess what? I win today. I win tomorrow. I win the next day. I win for six months and suddenly I get on the scale holy moly, I haven't been that weight since, you know, 2001. And so I think that there are ways by which we can, you know, uh, contextualize what the ultimate summit is in smaller steps to at least make it more digestible. And if you do that, I think you're more likely to succeed.